I've always felt that the difference between null and undefined is important in JavaScript. So much so I've done a tutorial on that concept in the past. In this tutorial, let's look at ways you can check for a null value or an absence of value. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. Also, check out the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. Now first, let's talk about the difference between null and undefined. And once again, I'll link to a previous tutorial that I have done on this, and I'll also link to a great Medium article. Now first, null and undefined are both primitive values in JavaScript. But what differentiates these two is that null is the intentional absence of value, while undefined is the unintentional absence of value. Those distinctions are very important. So if I'm setting something to say that it has no value, I set it to null. If the JavaScript engine is setting something to no value, it will use undefined. Sometimes that difference is important. But if we wind up as a programmer setting something to undefined, then we've nullified the difference. So therefore, I advocate whenever we're trying to specify no value, we use null. Now, as a result of this important difference, you may need to check to see if the value is undefined or null. And sometimes you just need to check to see if no value is present. So it could be null or undefined. Now the trick to this is using the double equals and triple equals and understanding truthy and falsy. Once again, both of those topics I've covered in previous tutorials. So I won't go into a lot of depth on those, but I will link to the tutorials if you'd like to view those. Now here I've set up four variables. The first one will become undefined. The JavaScript engine will set that to undefined. The second one I've designated as null, and then we have an empty string and zero. Now these are not all of the values that will evaluate to a falsy, but these are some of them, and these are the ones I want to use for this particular discussion. So what we mean by evaluating to falsy is that when we're checking to see what this value will evaluate to in a conditional, they are false. So undefined is false, no is false, var3 with a, an empty string is false, and zero is false. So if we did something like this, if var1, that would become false. Same thing with all of those variables. They would all be false. That is falsy. That is what we mean by falsy. Now we can see that when we log to the console, we can see that they provide something different, each one of them. For example, let's just look at var1, and that is undefined. And then, of course, var2 would be null. I think that's pretty well understood. This would be an empty string and that would be zero. So when we log those to the consoles, they have different values, but they are also falsy values. So let me show that really quick. Let's just do the first variable. If that evaluates to true, then we're going to print truthy. Otherwise, we're going to print falsy. So I'm using a ternary operator here just to check that. And you can check out a tutorial on that as well if you need to. So let's check var1 is falsy. var2 is falsy. three and four will all be faulty, like I said. Now what I want to particularly concern ourselves with is undefined and null, but I think it's important to see some of the other things that evaluate to a faulty. 
Now, one way to tell the difference between them is simply to check to see if they are equal to one another using the triple equals. In this case, we'll get false. They are not equal to one another. They are different, so we get a Boolean there, false. So in this case, it's easy to tell, it's easy to figure out that var1 doesn't contain the same thing as var2. However, if we are checking for an absence of value, like, th like this and this has, an absence of value, how do we differentiate between these and these others that will also produce a falsy value? How do we do that? For example, if we want to do something like this to make sure that the variable has a value before we do anything to it, before we act on it, look what happens when we use var3 or var4. I'm just going to put act on the variable here. Now, they have a value. This happens to be empty string. This one happens to be zero. They have a value, but will we act on it like we want to? So the idea is we're checking to see if it's null or undefined, thinking that using truthy and falsy, that will work for us. But in reality, it doesn't. Because when we go ahead and run this, we don't get that console log statement. So this never happened. This never happened because it evaluates to falsy not to truthy. We assume it's going to evaluate to truthy because of these values. But these values are falsy values. So how do we deal with that? Now to show that it's just the same for var4, let me just change that really quick so you can see that it doesn't make a difference there. Because those evaluate to falsy, this never happens. So let's talk about how we deal with that. Let me get rid of this. Well, in the old days, what I used to do is I'd use a, do an if statement, have a long string of things. I would check the variable against multiple things. And that is just a waste of code and is not necessary. There are better ways to do that. And here's what I want to show you. var1 double equals var2. What is that going to produce? Undefined and null. That is true. Those are equal to one another when we're using the double equal. However, notice that these other falsy values don't come back true. They come back false. So they are not equal to one another. So the way to solve this problem, if we want to check if there's an absence of values, we can do something like this. I'll do var1 first. If var1 equal null, whether that's undefined or null, it is going to return a true. And so if there is an absence of value, we can then act on it that way. Let's just take a look at that really quick. And that evaluates that way. However, these other things would not. So 3 does not. So both undefined and null are equal to each other if we use the double equals. They're different if we use the triple equals. So if we want to check if something is, is null, we can simply check it with triple equals like this. just like that. However, if we just want to check for an absence of value, then we use this technique. Now, some may talk about trying to use the type of operator to check that, but something interesting happens with type of. Let me show you that really quick. If I do type of for undefined, what do we get there? Well, we get undefined. Okay, now if we do type of for null, what do we end up getting there? It comes back object. 
So not exactly what we want, but if we know that, we could possibly use that. But the lesson gained from this is that when programming to check if a variable has any value at all before trying to process it, you can use the double equal and check it with no, just like this. You don't have to do the type a statement like this and check for both null and undefined. And the other lesson is to test if something is null, check it against null using triple equals. Now, before we're done here, please hit the like button and subscribe. And remember, I've provided discount links to all my courses in the description section. If you would like to become a patron of this channel, I would appreciate the support. For a certain level of support, you can get access to the code files that I use. You can also contribute by visiting my website. You can follow a link for both in the description. Click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. And thanks for watching.